Good morning, evening, and everything in between. What we are doing today is we are sort of rounding up our data science uh, portion of CSE 111, specifically about talking about a sort of a library, a development environment is really a better way of thinking about it, but it's known as Jupyter. So if you think about it, what we've been talking about all of really how we've been working this entire semester is through Spider. Uh, Spider is a development environment that allows us to code and we see uh, that code console sort of on the other screen. You can do some other crazy things like look at the values of the variables, but it's just a development environment. You can code, that code exists, it can be ran from anywhere. Jupyter creates what are known as interactive notebooks. The entire idea is it's going to take our code and it's going to take those console outputs and sort of mix them together in a way almost similar to how it works in idle, but in a, a sort of visually pleasing way and you know, other ways as well. But it, it sort of kind of creates this interactive website that we can manipulate. So if we kind of take a look, we've been again using the Anaconda Navigator uh, tool set. You've been familiar with Spider, right? You click on this launch button, you load Spider, you code in Spider. But there's tons of different libraries and development environments out there. So say for example, R Studio. Uh, pandas is pandas data frames are designed similar to model how R models data uh, through its data frames. Well, if you're using R, guess what? You can, in my case, install it, or you could hit run. Same kind of thing. We have Jupyter. So the entire concept is Jupyter is just going to build a web uh, build a web page for us, as we see in one second. And there you go. Now it's loading and it's probably so. Congratulations, you've got Jupyter running. Whoop de do. Now what? Okay, well I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the CSC 111 folder that we've been working on for a few weeks now, and that's on my desktop and there it is. Now, same kind of concept. I have, say for example, my Iris data set. This is it. I can click it and what do you know, it will actually load it up. I can edit and manipulate this data as I see fit. But specifically, I want to create something in, say, our core uh, folder. That's where we've been working with the uh, temp file so far. So the same kind of thing, I would just sort of come in here and our little new options over on the right and select, in our case, a Python 3 notebook. Again, this is creating its own tiny little library, uh, or sorry, tiny little web page. And again, you can see it's pretty blank to start, but now we have interactive, what Jupyter likes to call cells. And the entire idea is these individual cells are, cells, uh, cells are little code snippets that we can use, manipulate, and reuse. So in this case, that first one, every time I'm working inside of Jupyter, uh, I like to treat this as my import statements. And the entire idea there is just, this is where all the libraries that I'm planning on using uh, come in. This is no different than when you're working off of a Python template. Uh, so in our case, I want to do, say for example, a scatter plot analysis of the Iris dataset. We've already done this, but I want to use uh, Jupyter in this case so we can see what happens. So in our case, I'll come in and import pandas as pd and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Okay, fancy, uh, you know, I've written three lines of code. Well, again, this is a little tiny snippet. And so if I use two fingers and I hold shift enter, what it did was that what Jupyter did was it loaded that data into its memory. And so suddenly I have access to the pandas library, the matplotlib library, and I can use them in other snippets. So again, say for example, I want to load that Iris data set. So I'll just call it uh, Iris, since we're using that, equals pd.readcsv. And again, uh, since we're using uh, sort of a uh, file hierarchy, I need to go up a directory, up a directory, down into the data directory, down into the data directory, and there's my iris.csv. 
and there's my iris.csv. Now, I hit that, I run it. Once again, I have that data loaded into a cell. So I'm able to manipulate it as I see fit. So uh, say for example, I came in and did something like iris, or iris.head. Again, Jupyter is gonna create this interactive notebook. So as I'm uh, coding out my work, you know, if I did the dot head function, you know, we've seen that in Spider, it's going to little print out over on the console side. I don't really have a console here, uh, so where's it going to appear? It's going to appear in line. So literally, uh, that data has appeared in this case, sort of a little snippet of it, uh, jumping uh, down. So my cell executed and wherever that output would go, uh, Jupyter, what does is outputs it. So in this case, you can see, uh, I can double click and hide that or, you know, whatever. But the entire point is now it's loading that data in line. So I'm going to do just one more step and then we're going to see uh, a way to say plot our data using Jupyter. So in this case, the first thing I'm going to do is just specify which features I want to work off of inside of uh, my Jupyter library. And this is actually one of the beautiful things. Just on accident, uh, you know, just force of habit, I already hit shift enter, right? I accidentally uh, shift entered, uh, and so that line of code is executed. Oh, well, I guess that's it. No, so what I can do is I can actually go into these cells, as you can see my cursor's blinking here, and I can go in and continue to manipulate them uh, even though I've already executed that part. So in this case, I can come in and create the y-axis. Now, what's gonna happen when I hit shift enter? It's going to take whatever that snippet of code is and rerun it. So effectively, those two lines, uh, it was just one line. It was just x-axis getting created. Now, x-axis is once again created or updated, and y-axis now exists. Pretty nice. So the last little bit is, once again, I want to sort of create some scatter plot diagrams of, say, the sepal length and the petal width. Okay, well, in that case, we're just doing a lot of the similar approaches that we've seen with pandas in the past. So in my case, I'm going to uh, just go ahead and take my iris data set and group by its species. So again, and I'll hold off on it. So again, that's just going to extract out where there are the same values. So all of my setosas are going to be in one group, all of my varicicolors in one group, and my virginicas in one group. Then I can use something like a for loop. So in our case, for name comma data in species. Remember, name is going to be effectively what was the uh, sort of thing that was unique or was common amongst all of the elements in a particular group. So all of them were setosas and then all of them were virginicas and various colors. That's what name's going to be. Data is literally going to be a small micro data frame of that data. So in our case, that's what I want to plot. So in our case, plt.scatter. Uh, let's see, we're going to go with data at the x-axis across data at the y-axis. Now, the last little thing I'm going to add in here is name equals, or sorry, label equals name. The entire reason here is because what if I want to create, say for example, a legend? I want to plot out my data and I want to uh, effectively show which of the different species is which color. Since I'm using a for loop, uh, one of the things that pandas is going to be doing in the background, or matplotlib is going to be doing in the background, is it's going to be assigning it a different color. So in our case, as I hit shift enter, you can see to start, oh, look at that. It's going to plot that data in line with the rest of my code. Now, like I said, I wanted to have a legend. I accidentally clicked the uh, shift enter too soon. Well, in that case, I can just come back up here, plt.legend, legend, and 
as you can guess it, just like when I did my dot head, uh, I could manipulate that. And just to show that off again, I can manipulate this. It will change what the output is for uh, a particular cell. The same thing is going to happen here. When I hit shift enter, you can already probably guess what's going to happen. This time it's going to have a nice little legend as well. And so all we're really doing is uh, sort of creating these interactive pages. I keep using that term, but it's really effectively just letting us code. And then as we want to make print statements or see what our data is doing, it just allows it to happen in flow sort of in that just kind of linear fashion, that vertical structure that we're working off of. And so that's how you use Jupyter.